Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today I'm bringing you another back burner project, and by that I mean a project that I've had on my list for a few years now, and I finally got to make them. So there's a funny reason why I wanted to make this guy, and hopefully you recognize him by the bird poop on the side of his face. Yeah, there's a funny story of why I wanted to make him, and I'll put that story in the pinned comment below. So look in the pinned comment underneath all the timestamps, there will be a story there that I told on my Facebook page. So he's another character that's made without clay. You can use clay if you want to, but in this video I'm going to show you how to do it without clay. And this guy does have wires, so there's wires in his arms only. And he's not built around an armature, so his arms are placed into a body that I make out of foil. If you don't want to work with wires, I'm going to give you options on how to make his arms without them. This is part one of two videos. And part two I haven't even started yet, and I'll talk about that in a second. So part one is going to get you through this entire doll. So everything that you see here, we're going to do together. You don't need any clay, and you don't need anything fancy for his eyes either. I'm going to show you how to do those. They turned out fantastic. So part two is going to show you how to do the cape, which is still cooking over here. <laughs> so I haven't even started that yet. Once I get that cape figured out, then I'm going to upload part two. And if you don't want to make this character, of course you can make any character that you want to. Just follow along and leave out the bird poop. In the next clip, we're going to be covering the supplies list. And remember, there are detailed timestamps in the pinned comment below. So let's get started. The bare basics that you'd need to make a doll like this is aluminum foil, masking tape, paper towels, regular white glue, and for his skin color, I'm using Full Cart Skin Tone. You can use any aluminum foil that you have on hand, as long as it doesn't say non-stick because you need the masking tape to stick to it. If you use a grocery store brand or a no-name brand foil, it'll be a lot thinner than this stuff here, and you'll have to use a lot more than I show in this video. You want to get a cheap paper towel. This is a two-ply no-name brand from Walmart, and this design on here disappears when it's wet. So you don't want to have a three-ply or anything that has a heavy design on it, because we are going to do his face with it, and you don't want anything to show up in his face. If you can't find a paper towel where this design disappears when it's wet, then you can use a plain napkin. Uh, for the rest of his body is covered in the paper towel as well, but it doesn't really matter what kind it is because we do cover it with the fabric and you'll never see it anyway. To make his outfit and his shoes, I'm using scrap fabrics that I had on hand and a little bit of fake fur. And for the hand wrap part, it's just basically rags. When I was looking at his pictures online, I couldn't figure out what that was, but I think it's just rags. What I used was this stuff here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is called cheesecloth. I'm not exactly sure. I did find it in a thrift store years ago, so. Anyway, it's very raggy, as you can see. Lots of holes in there, but you can use basically anything. If you're making Radagast with me, then of course you want to use your earthy tones. So your browns, your greens, anything that you'd find in nature. For his beard and his hair, I'm using fake fur, and again this is just stuff I had in my stash, a thrift store find. Whenever you attach hair or fur to a doll, I find it best to use a tacky glue. You can use other glues of course, but this will grab a lot faster. And a pair of pliers come in handy for when you're shaping different things. Also for his eyes, I'm using split peas. So this is split peas that I found in soup mix. And to attach those, we're going to use tacky glue. And finally, we are going to make posable arms in this video, but like I said, I'm going to give you options, so don't feel intimidated by that. And I did do wires in his fingers as well, but again, you can do different kind of hands for him. In my last video, I did these hands here made out of only foil. There's no wire in here. So there's foil, masking tape, and paper towel for these fingers here. So most posable dolls start off with an armature and then you build around that. I didn't do that. His legs are actually stationary and only his arms and his fingers are posable. And you can add that wire in or give him stationary arms, like I said. Okay, he doesn't have to have wire in there. You can use any wire that you have on hand, honestly, as long as you can pose it. If it can bend and keep a pose, then you can use it. I don't know how long that would last, like if you kept bending it, how long it would last before it breaks, okay? Um, I have other dolls that I've made with this, and they're a few years old, but I'm the only one that uses them, so that could be why they're not broken yet. Uh, this is just your basic florist wire that I found in the dollar store. That's what I started off in this video using, but then I found my real armature wire in my stash, so I changed my mind later and I installed this, and I include all of that in the video. Alright guys, in the next clip we are going to be rolling off foil, and remember you can make this character any size that you wish. He ended up being seven inches tall. I tried to get down to six, but he chose his own height. <laughs> so let's get started.
All right, so in the previous clip, you saw me working out the heels, and that was just using little bits of foil at a time. I push it down onto the table as I'm pushing it into the back of his leg, so it really flattens it out when I'm doing that. So you want a nice flat foot, and depending on what you're looking for, I wanted a doll that will stand up without any issues at all on his own. You should be able to, you know, knock him around a little bit, and he should stand on his own. I guess these would be considered quite large for his body. But once he has his cloak on, his robe, and all that kind of stuff, these will be well matched to the rest of that. All right, in the next clip, I'm going to be popping in again uh, with another edit just to talk about his arms. All right, my friends, I am popping in from the future just to give you a heads up that when I started this video, I fully intended on using this wire here. And I was just going to have posable arms with stationary hands. I was going to give him posable arms and then make them fingers like this here. Um, I later changed my mind and I also changed the wire. So you can actually take the wire out after you have the shoulders established and it's taped up. You can take that wire out of there. Okay, you don't need to leave it in. I did leave mine in for a while, but it's not necessary. I'm just going to create the hole now so I can make shoulders. So that's the whole purpose of doing it now. So let's do it now. <laughs> then we can attach the shoulders. So I'm going to use an awl and just go right through from one side to the other. So you want to cut your wire way too long to start with. So my wire is not going to end up down here, but this is where my hands are going to end. And you can tell that on yourself if you stand up and just let your hands lay at your side. You can see where they end. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'll do the other side. Yeah, I want it to be pretty free in there, so I think that's good. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side. I'll just turn the camera off for a bit. We'll be right back. All right, my friends, I'm going to give you the measurements of this guy, and it looks like I've jumped ahead a step, but I haven't. I'm going to show you what I've done in the next clip. It's just that I had covered him in a little bit of fabric before I added the paper towel, and then I realized I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Took that off. It's a long story, but you don't need to hear it. So I'm going to give you his measurements. He ended up being seven inches, seven inches tall. I was hoping for six, but seven's okay. His legs are two, just about two and a half from the bottom of his belly to the bottom of his shoe. And his shoes are a little bit on the large side as well. Two inches. And his body is three inches. And his head and neck are an inch and a half standing off the shoulder. And the shoulders are two inches wide. When I had first put my pokey tool through him, this hole over here was a good size. This one over here was a little bit larger than I wanted it to be, and it was just because I pushed it in up to about here. And what I did to fix that was just put in a little bit of foil and covered it with the tape. And then I covered it with the paper towel, which we'll get to later in the video, and I'll explain that once we get to that stage. I just wanted to pop in now, give you the measurements, because in the next few clips you are going to see this fabric on him. Just ignore that. All right, so we'll get back to what we were doing. So I'm going to shape his legs a little bit more and then add some tape around there. And the, the very bottom of his legs, he actually has skin showing. So I want to do the same thing. So I got to squeeze a lot of this down here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same to the other leg.
So he's actually got two different shoes on, and that makes it super fun, actually. We can give one a point, like an elf shoe. All right, I'm going to add the tape to those. So in the next clip, I am covering him with paper towel. So I just pour my glue in there. And because my glue is on the thick side, I water it down a little bit. Most of you know that by now, if you've seen my other videos. And then I'll just take a piece of paper towel, I lay it on the surface, fold the dry sides together, pull off the excess. Make sure the glue is completely covering that towel. Flip it over and then get the other side wet as well. Okay, and then I lay this on his body and I'll do it in sections, whatever is easiest for me. I'll cover what I can and then leave it underneath the fan for a few minutes until it's dry enough to touch. And when you see this white under here, that's just the glue still drying. You can go ahead and, and work on it once you can touch it and it doesn't stick to you anymore. When it's completely dry, it turns into the color of the masking tape because the masking tape's just showing through. Okay, and I'm seriously thinking about making his head a little bit bigger because I want to give him a glorious huge nose <laughs> and I'm thinking that his head might be a little bit too small for that. I think he could use a bigger head. Okay, and I'm avoiding the wire, of course. I don't want to wrap that wire up in the paper towel. And what the paper towel does is gives it a paintable surface as well as ensures that that masking tape will never come undone. So there's no open edges of that masking tape. It's completely covered with the paper towel. When I got to his legs, I did two or three layers of the paper towel. Made sure to work out as many wrinkles as I could because that's going to be painted skin color and then it's going to be showing. Uh, the rest of it doesn't matter because it's all going to be covered in fabric. And remember, he's going to have a beautiful big beard here as well. So we don't really have to worry too much about the bottom of his face, although we do want to have something where his beard can glue onto. But I am going to make his head bigger right now anyway, so let's do that. When you're putting the foil on a doll like this, you want to make sure you're pulling it tight. You don't want to have loose foil because it'll make it difficult later. When you put the tape on it, it'll feel really loose and squishy, so you don't want to do that. So try to pull it as tight as you can. I'm just going to put a thin, smooth piece on here. And again, I'm pulling pretty tight. So you can see that gave me a smoother surface. And when I put on his nose and his eyes later, it'll look a little bit better. All right, I'm going to give you the measurements. And as always, please don't get hung up on those. I'm just giving them out of courtesy in case you want to make the same size. But you can literally make them any size you want to. It's still an inch and a half off the shoulders. And it's almost, oh, it's right on. Inch and a quarter across. Inch and a quarter wide. And inch and a quarter that way as well. And I'll make sure to work out the wrinkles. And we're not going to give him ears because he's got a lot of hair. That's going to be covering up most of them, which is wonderful for us. And again, his neck is also going to be covered in the, in the hair. But I am going to cover it with the paper towel. Just to make sure that that masking tape underneath always stays put. Yeah, I'm going to do one more layer of paper towel just over the face. The rest of it's fine. Alright, so I dried his face and I wasn't too happy with the shape here. I thought it was sunken in too much. So I just added some more foil and I'm going to show you how I've done that because I created a little chin and it's going to be the same way we attach his nose as well. So I'm going to hot glue this into place. And when you're taping over paper towel that's already been dried, that's been dipped in glue and dried, it's not going to stick all that well. But the tape is only to prepare it for the paper towel. The paper towel is what's going to keep everything in place forever. You just want to make sure that you cover all the foil with the tape. And I did take out his arm wire, and it was very easy. I just pulled it out. And I think I'm going to be replacing it with a different kind of wire. Okay, so I'm going to make a little nose. I'm just going to make the, the bald part of the nose. I won't make the nostrils yet. This part is obviously too flat, so we're going to build that up now. I 
Okay, I'm going to take that up and I'll see how that looks. I can't really tell yet. I get kind of foil blind sometimes and I can't tell if what I'm doing is working or not. <laughs> That's why I end up doing some things two, three times on the same area to get it right because I, I do get a little bit blind with it. So I just played around with the shape a little bit now that it's dry. And I was squeezing here with the pliers. And then these indents here I just created with the back of my all you can use anything and just push in. Just to create a little bit of a space where we're going to put the eyes. And at this very moment I have no idea how I'm going to do the eyes. I might paint them or I might actually add some little eyes. And then I squeezed on top of his forehead. Now remember he's going to have lots of hair. So I don't really care that this is kind of flattened out here. That doesn't bother me. He's also going to have a hat. But I'm just creating a little bit of a brow there. He's got big thick um, eyebrows. So yeah, just doing that. Now I'm going to create his nostrils. Now the first time I did nostrils like this that I'm going to show you, I had worked on this set here and that was for my little dragon. And I had come up with an idea that makes it a little bit easier than trying to figure it out with foil. But this time around, I'm actually going to use one layer of the paper towel. So I'm going to separate these layers. I didn't do that with the dragon. And you don't actually have to do that, but I just thought this might be easier. It might make the material a little bit easier to work with. Okay, And I'm just going to get a little piece, get it in the glue. Soak it in the glue, actually. And then kind of break it up with your fingernails, it becomes like a gooey mess and then place it on the side. You might have to dip your finger in the glue as well to get the paper towel to not stick to you. And I'm gonna do one side at a time because I just think it's gonna be easier. Okay, so this is gonna be his nostril, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this under the fan for about four or five minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll work on it a little bit more. Okay, I set the timer for four minutes, and that is dry enough to touch now. So I'm just going to hold on the side. I'm going to use my pokey tool, and I'm going to create a nostril just by poking in there. So that's still pretty sticky in there. So I'm just going to set it under the fan for another minute or so. I'll be right back. All right, so I gave that another minute, and that's a little bit better. Okay, it was just uh, pulling out when I was sticking the tool in there. Okay, I'm just going to shape this out a little bit better. I'm going to shape, you know, the side of the nostril that flares out. So I'm going to hold this part with my finger and I'll just push out. There we got some of it done anyway. We'll come back to it. I'm just going to get the other side on there. And there will be a little bit of shrinking once it fully dries as well. Okay, so I'm just going to fix the very tip there. Alright, I gave that about 10 minutes under the fan, maybe a little longer. I'm just squeezing the center part of his nostril because his nostrils because it was kind of fat right there. Okay, and now I can play around with it a little bit more with this tool. And it definitely gets easier the drier it gets. You don't want to leave it dry like overnight or anything because you'll never be able to move it around in there. I always just do minutes at a time. And I want him to have a crooked nose, so I'm just going to pull this over a little bit. Come on, gotta get crooked. I should have done it earlier, see what I mean? That part is pretty dry in there, so it gets harder to manipulate. Alright guys, I am popping up with an edit because I did the nose and it turned out wonderful. And I, I love it. It would have been great on any other guy. But when I was looking up his eye color, I saw a close-up of his face and I could see that his nose was quite large without definition. There's no definition in there. And I put a little bit too much definition around the nostrils. Look at that nose. There's not much definition on each side and it's crooked. I actually made the, the crooked part the wrong way too. I've done everything wrong guys. <laughs>
This is why it helps to keep the picture beside you. I was just going off my own head there. I wasn't really looking at his picture when I was doing his nose. Which I should. Alright, so it's almost dry and that looks so much better. And all I had to do to twist it the other way was just put my pliers there and twist. And I got the the crooked part to go the right direction. Alright, so I'll let you continue watching the video as they were. And remember, that nose wasn't fixed until a few clips from now. Yeah, I'm just going to add a top lip here. And I'm going to do one lip at a time because I think it's just easier. And I would suggest doing one lip at a time until you get used to the material. All right, so I'm just gonna set that under the fan and let it dry for a little bit. And okay, I went ahead and did this side here just so I can get a feel of it. So let's do it together. You definitely need a tool like this to move that stuff around. If you look at a picture of him, everyone I've seen, he's got this cute little smirk and it pushes its cheeks out a little bit. So that's what I'm creating here. And I was just editing the last few clips and I realized that when I went to put this cheek on, I was way up here and you couldn't see it. I feel badly about that. But it's just the same as I've shown you how to do with the lip and the nose. You just move that material around until you have the shapes that you want. So now I'm just going to add the bottom lip. Yeah, it's too bad I, I filmed off the corner of the camera there. I'm really sorry about that, guys. Sometimes I get caught up when I'm, with what I'm doing and I don't look into the screen because it's hard enough to manipulate everything like this looking over the camera, uh, let alone looking through the camera. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes I get caught up in what I'm doing and I go right off the screen. All right, my friends, I am stopping in with another edit because I'm just working on this hair now. And I was about to do his eyebrows, and I realized when I was looking at his picture, his brows should be over his eye a little bit. And, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a paper towel, and I'm going to put straight tacky glue on it. And I'm going to roll it up, I'm going to create a little brow. And I'm not worried about it too much, because once it's dry, and I get the hair on there, you won't be able to tell at all. So when you're working out your guy, I keep repeating this, but always keep a picture of him beside you. Uh, don't just rely on what I'm doing, because, as you can tell, I do mess things up once in a while. <laughs> and I learn from them, which is awesome. Mistakes are our best teachers. Yeah, that looks so much better. Tap it down, make sure you have good contact. So I added an eyebrow here, an eyebrow there, and then I filled it in on top with some more paper towel and glue. And that, I have to admit, that looks so much more normal. <laughs> and a lot better. So, yeah, just keep that in mind, guys. Like, I'm doing my best here, and I'm learning, too, as I go along. But, yeah, don't forget his forehead. And popping in with another edit from the future, just to give you a couple of points while you're building your guy. So, again, you would want to figure out that forehead before you get to his hair. And if I was to do this all over again, see those cheeks there? I actually wanted those a little bit more puffy. So, to avoid some shrinkage in there, if I were to do this all, all over again... I would have built those cheeks up with foil. So the same way I did his little chin, remember I added that little chin there? I would have done that with the cheeks because then you don't get the shrinkage like you do if you just use paper towel. I think he looks great. I love his face. He's really handsome. But yeah, I would have loved to have had a little bit more puffiness there. So just a couple things to keep in mind as you're building your guy. So in the next clip, we're going to be attaching the eyes. And for this one, I'm using split peas and that's the first time. And they turned out so awesome. I will be using that again in the future. Alright guys, I am going to use some split peas that I found in my soup mix here. And this was an idea I came up for when I did my dragon video, my little miniature dragon. I had some safety eyes for him. And I was trying to figure out what you guys could use without having to order eyes. And it was this. So I just looked around in there for the smallest little piece that I could find. 
and I found two that look almost identical in size and they're pretty tiny. I haven't actually used split pea eyes yet. We're doing it for the first time together, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, I had installed those eyes once, but um, I took them off because I realized I needed to make this indent a little bit bigger. So I'm just doing an edit. I need to set the eyes back a little bit. If you figure out what eyes you're going to use beforehand, of course you want to do this while the material is still wet and everything because like I said now that this is dry I'm gonna have a little bit more trouble but I'll get it I'm just gonna take a little bit more force and it's a good warning to have before you get to this part right so let's try this again I'm just gonna dot in the tacky glue Okay, once you're happy with the eyes, then you can seal them in. And I'm using Varathane. You can use a clear nail polish. So I just did dark blue, and you go from top to bottom because it's going to be covered with the eyelid, right? And then you just do black in the center. Okay, I'm going to show you how I do the eyelids. So let's do the bottom first. So this will be the top eyelid, and this will be the bottom one. Okay, I'm going to fold it three times. So once in half, and then over one more time. I'm just going to take a little bit of the length off. That's better. So in the previous clip, you saw me putting what looked like lower eyelids on underneath his eye. Like, I guess the bags under our eyes, that kind of thing. To build it up a little bit before you put the eyelid on is helpful because the paper towel does shrink. Once it's dry a little bit, I'll come back and I'll move that around just a little bit more. But for now, I'm going to get the top one on. Okay, fold it, and then I'm going to fold it again. All right, I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. I'll set them in front of the pan for a minute. Be right back. And now we're going to make his hands and I'm going to give you options because in this video I actually uh, decided on the spot what I was going to do with his hands. It wasn't pre-planned. And I'll walk you through all the steps of how I did his fingers. I made five individual fingers and I used armature wire and to make it a little bit thicker I did wrap those with tape and paper towel. And we'll get to that in a bit. But if you don't want to do it that way you can just attach stationary hands to an arm that you've already made. Or if you're stuck in wire and you just want to attach a hand to the wire, you can do it that way as well. So you would go to this guy's video and that will be in the pinned comment below. And once you get to his video, there's timestamps there and you can skip to where his hands are made. And those are just made with foil, tape, and paper towel. And if you didn't want to make five individual fingers and then attach them, you can add in five wires into that hole in his body. I don't want to cut my armature wire. I want to keep this for future projects. So I'm going to show you how I did this little guy's hands here using really skinny wire. And I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how I made these fingers because I always felt badly that I never got this on video. Anyway, I did explain it on my blog many years ago, but a video is always better. So I'm going to get out five wires here. So you're going to kind of have to figure out the finger length. When you're working with thread, I would give yourself about an inch and a half to work with. So I'm just going to wrap some tape around where the wrist is going to be. When I'm doing thread wrapping for hands, I also wrap around the hand part. So we're going to do the fingers and then also the hand part. So I'm going to wrap each individual finger. So I'm just going to separate these, make my job a little bit easier. And I can bring them together again after. When I did this guy, I actually had skin colored thread which is wonderful and that was punch embroidery thread so that stuff is very thin. I would have to wrap many many times. Um, you could use any thread because you can always also paint it after you're done. I'm going to bring the glue down to the nozzle there and I'll just dip my wire right in there. I'm just going to get a couple of wraps on the wrist and now I'm going to start the finger. And you just wrap all the way to the tip and then back down again. And if you're doing a rodent type character, leave the little tip exposed because it looks like fingernails. Okay, and now we got down to the bottom. We're gonna get some glue on the next wire and now we'll wrap that one. Okay, I've got all five fingers done, so I'm just gonna bring them back together. Okay, and I just go over it again with the tacky glue 
and then just rub it all in with your finger all the way around. Make sure you get near the tips because you don't want that thread to unravel later on. Okay, and now we're going to do the hand. So it depends on how long you want the fingers, right? You keep wrapping, and wherever you want to stop, then you wrap back. If you want a thicker hand, then wrap back up again. And now you can keep wrapping for the wrist. And you can stop wherever you feel you need to. If you're going to be dressing the arm, of course, you just want to bring that wrap back a little ways, so if they pull back the sleeve, you'll still see an arm there. And when you're wrapping down the arm, then of course you're wrapping over the beginning thread as well. There we go. And then I would just do the tacky glue on top of that. And now you know how I've done my little rat hands. And for those of you who've been asking me, I finally got it on video. <laughs> so once you get the one arm done, then you could take the other end, just put some tape over it to get it through the body. Just make it a little bit easier for yourself. And push it through. Once it's pulled through, you want to adjust the length, make sure it's right on that side. And then this side, wherever that longest finger is going to land on your leg, you cut down to size. Okay, so now we're going to work on this guy's fingers. What I did with this one was five individual fingers, and I wrapped them with the tape and the paper towel to make them a little bit more uh, thicker and give them some flesh. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Okay, so this looks like I have two wires in here, but it's actually one that I bent in half. And then I made a little loop on this wire here, and I attached them here. So I pulled this through after I had the hand already attached. So I'm just going to cut five wires about the same length. These are about two inches long. And now I'm going to wrap each one in the tape. Unlike the rat, we don't want to have fingernails on there. We're going to cover up the tip. Okay, make sure you cover that up. So I'm just going to split this and roll one side before you do the other. Making sure to get that tip on there. I was just doing these fingers and then I realized my tape is as wide as a finger. So I could just place it right on here and I cut a straight edge. I'll do it this way so you can see. Just place that in there. Tip down. And now roll it. And I'm just rolling. And I'll just cut that free. And I figured that out when I was almost done. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <laughs> Let's get both sides wet with the glue and lay that on there. And just worry about the tip part. The other end, don't worry so much about it, just get it to flatten out because that's all going to be hidden anyway. So we just want to have a nice fingertip, right? The, this part here doesn't matter because we're going to be covering all of that up. I'm going to lean this up on something so they're not stuck right on the wax paper here. There we go, like that. Okay, so you let those fingers dry. When they're dry to the touch, I just kind of roll them to make sure they're all nice and smooth. And then I did go through them and find which one is the fattest finger. I'm going to make it the thumb because there will be a fat finger and there'll probably be a super skinny finger. So I'm going to make this the thumb and the skinniest finger right there is going to be the pinky. Okay, and now I'm going to wrap this in tape. But I just want to make sure that my fingers are the same length here on each hand. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap that again with more tape. Okay, now I'm going to bend this end here, the wrist end. I'm going to make a little loop. I'm going to bend these up into a loop. And I'm going to attach that. There we go. And I just want to make sure I have the right length. And that's actually too long, so I'm going to shorten that up a little bit. That looks about right. So now I'm going to crimp this with the pliers and turn it. Just twist it. Now I'm going to wrap that in tape. Okay, I'm going to wrap around here and pull your tape pretty tight. Now this one was looped, 
so I didn't have any extra wire. Now I could just wrap that around. I'm just going to cut some of it off. I don't want any wire poking through my fabric later. So I'm just going to twist that and now I'm going to wrap that, just those ends there. So you just want to make sure these two loops here are really secure, okay, that they're never going to come apart. So I'm just going to wrap that one more time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put paper towel over this tape here just to ensure that that tape never comes apart. So I'm going to be painting only the parts that are going to be visible. So remember down here there's going to be a little bit of his leg showing, so I'm going to paint that skin tone. I'll paint his hands, skin tone, and his face, and his eyelids. And when you paint over something that's been dipped in glue, uh, the paint will most likely crack, so you'll need two coats. All right, so I did three coats of paint on his face, and that was to help fill in any little fine lines and wrinkles. I did two coats on the hands and two coats on the legs. So now I'm going to fill in the arm stuffing and I'm going to do this a little bit differently than it's probably done normally and that's only to ensure that this stuffing doesn't move so I'm going to do it in a way that this will never slide up and down. It will also keep the arm in place and it'll help with this little bit here, fill in this little section here. So I have stretchy material and it's about five and a half, six inches long and it says wide as the arm and also comes down past here a little bit. So right about here and then I'm going to be adding this other fabric after we get this piece sewn in. So I'll start it down here, just underneath. I'll fold it over and then just start wrapping. And like I said, it's about five and a half, six inches long and that seemed to be long enough. Give me enough stuffing anyway. Okay, I'm gonna wrap right there until I have a little bit left like that. And then I have to stretch it over his shoulder. Okay, I'm gonna pull it in the back so it meets up about there. I'm gonna hold it with my finger, hold this side. And now this is going to be the weird part. I'm going to go right through his body with my needle. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but I can do it. I'm going to get it there and I'm going to press down on my table. Just make sure that your finger is out of the way when it comes through the back side. So once it's through, just come up, grab your pliers and pull it through. And I did bend my other needle as well. This one is bent too. I think we're going to be sacrificing a needle here, guys, but <laughs> the results are kind of worth it. Okay, so I'm going to go back through again, pull that down, go through the back side now. And that's the hardest part, just that part. And it's not that difficult once you get the hang of it. Now I'm going to sew the seam. I'm going to sew it closed. So I'm going to take my bent needle, <laughs> go down here. Okay, now I'm going to sew back and forth to close up that seam. And when I get down to the where the elbow would be, now you got to figure that out yourself. Just figure out where you think the elbow is going to be. And we're going to wrap around it like this. Just wrap tightly around. Don't break your thread, of course. I'll do three times is good enough. And now sew the rest of that seam closed. And we're going to take care of the wrist once we get the gloves on there. I'm just going to sew from here to the back and then I can knot off. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to knot off and cut free. When I first gave this some thought, I thought they were a crocheted mitt that he had on his hand, but it's actually just rags. It's raggy looking. And to color it, what I'm going to do is, because I don't have any fabric paint, I'm just going to mix water with paint. So I've got some water in there, don't know how much. Okay, cinnamon brown. So I just want to stain the fabric. So if we paint on fabric with just straight acrylic paint, it's going to come stiff. So I figured if I do it with this water, it'll stay more soft. And it seemed to. It seems to be quite soft. Maybe a little bit stiff in areas, but anyway, I'm going to dip that in there. Get it soaked. I think I put the wrong brown in there. I think I put burnt umber in there. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze it out and then bring in my plain water and rinse it out. Alright, so I'm going to lay it over my fan and I'll leave it dry for a few minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to flip that in half. Now you think his fingers would just slip right through those holes, but he needs a little bit of help getting him on there. Okay, 
and I'll use what I cut off as extra on top of the glove as well. I'm going to sew the sides together. I'll just tuck one underneath the other and then I'll take my brown thread and my crooked needle and I'll just sew those seams closed on each side. Now the first one's going to pull through so just bring it almost all the way through and then go around again and then knot it. And because they're so raggy looking on his hand you don't have to worry about making anything neat looking. The messier it is the better. And I'm going to sew that in. Okay, and what I'm going to do here now is sew it to the bottom of his blue fabric. So these two pieces will become like one. Alright, so that's how I did that part. So I'll continue working on that and we'll be back in a bit. We're going to start working on his outfit. I'm so excited because I have difficulties with making patterns and stuff like that. We're just going to do this as simple as possible. So I'm going to do one leg at a time and then I'm going to sew them together at the end and make a little pair of pants. So I've already done one leg and now I'm going to do this side here. So just cut out a piece of fabric that will fit around at least halfway around his body on the top because we need to sew this part and this part together in the end. Because he's so fat it'll be difficult to uh, do it right on his body. So I just measured myself. So I gotta sew the leg up just to here and I'm doing it inside out. So I'm just gonna go up about an inch. I'll just make a little seam. And now I'm just gonna go back down to the bottom and then I'll knot off. Okay, I'm going to knot off right here and cut free. I'm just going to cut off the excess on the other side of that seam I just sewed. And I'll turn these right side. Now we can set the other side on. Okay, just put one side flat and then the other side will just tuck it. And then the back end, same thing, just tuck it. Okay, and now we can sew these two sides together. I'll start from the inside and come out. Okay, and now I'll do the same on this side. And I'll go down just a little ways and then I'll take them off him and I'll finish sewing. So I actually got it just by leaving it right on his body. And just, um, I sewed from down here and I just tried to get underneath the fabric instead of going over top. Yeah, so I tried to stitch from inside. So inside out. And I got it. A little bit of a pleat here, but that's okay. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about the top of his pants because I'm going to be putting a vest on him that's going to be going over his pants. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a running stitch. I was first going to do a nice seam on top, but I've since changed my mind. I don't have to spend the time on that because it's not going to be seen anyway. So I'm just going to go in and out all the way around him. And then I'll cinch up his, his pants. It's actually pulling. <laughs> it's pulling that knot through. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I'll go beyond the knot and see if that helps. Yes, that helps. So I was pulling on the front here and it was actually pulling the knot where I started. It was pulling it through the pants. Okay, now I'm going to knot off right here to hold it. Here. <laughs> now we can cut free. Alright, so now I'm going to make him an undershirt, I've just decided, because I want to make him a vest, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have it closed or not. So I just found this tea towel thingy 
from I had bought from the dollar store. It's a very thin fabric, and it's got all these great colors on it. But uh, the seams are all different, like the edge here, are all different colors. So I had to cut two pieces. So the first one I cut, I just folded down like this, and then I did a little hole in the top for his head. And his head's quite large, so it uh, made the hole quite a bit bigger than what I had cut first. I'll just tuck that in best I can, like that. Now I'll sew that closed. Yeah, I have to remember, it's not doesn't really matter because no one's going to see this anyway on this side. He's going to have robes and everything on top as well. So. Alright, so I got the other side done, and then the bottom edge, I just added a seam like this. So I sewed it right across. And I also sewed from that to the shirt to the pants. So now this is one piece. And I don't have to do this part because this will never be seen anyway, and there's going to be hair and fabric and all that kind of stuff over it. But just in case it's helpful to somebody out there. So if I was to sew this under, I'm going to have a big gap there. See that? Big gap. And that was because his head was so big I had to kind of tear it to get it over. So, if you have a problem like that, this would even work in the front. It's okay to be seen. I folded the edge and sewed across already to create a little seam. And I'm just going to put that on the back here. And I could glue this down or I could sew this down. That's what I love about miniatures and clothes that won't be coming off. You can do all sorts of different things. Make it look like you're a professional, you know? So I've already measured how much room I'd need for his arm. So I know it's right about there, so I'm going to cut. You want to go the length of his arm, maybe a little bit longer. And then for the shoulder part, you just go like this. And that seems to be working for me. Uh, remembering old patterns that I've seen, I know that the arms kind of Go like that <laughs> so I'm just kind of going off a faded memory but yeah and then it goes on like this all right but first of all I'm going to sew the cuff this part here so I'm going to just fold that up just a little ways and then I'm going to sew across it And what I do to make this go super fast is I just go in and out across and then I'm going to come back again and I'll go in and out over the spaces so I have a continuous stitch going across. Okay, and I want to sew this inside out so my seam will be on the outside here. And I'm only going to sew up to the shoulder part, and then I'll turn around. Okay, and now I'll go back down, and then knot off, and then you can cut free, and turn it right side. Okay, we're just going to slide it up the arm, and if you have fabric that has like holes in it or anything, the fingers are going to get caught, you can just place something over the fingers, like another piece of fabric, and then pull the arm over that, or the sleeve over that. So because this was unplanned, this t-shirt part, or this undershirt, I think I would have done these gloves after I did that, because it was a little bit difficult getting this one over this glove here, because this glove's a little bit thicker than that one. So for the top here, I'm just going to tuck this under. I didn't have to do this on the, on the first sleeve, I'm going to do it on this one. I'm just going to cut this a little bit, just to reduce the bulk on this one. Okay, now I'm going to tuck it under. You know what? This sleeve went on beautifully. There was no issues whatsoever. Now this one here is just like, ha ha ha. We are going to make your life a little harder. 
It's okay, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna win. I will bring my needle from underneath first to the top. I have a little bit of a gap under here, so I'm just going to make sure I cinch that up. But I closed it up. Yay. Okay, I'm going to continue on. Okay, I'm going to go back down here. I'm just going to tack this corner of this down. It looks like Radagast sewed it himself. <laughs> I didn't do it, I swear. <laughs> it was him. Okay, we're going to knot off, carry it away, and cut free. <laughs> and now I'm just going to put a thin even layer of tacky glue all the way around I made a slit here so I can go around his leg Okay, so I'm going to be gluing on a little bit of fur, and I have this fake fur here. I'm just cutting off little bits. I'm going to attach it with tacky glue. Alright guys, just popping in to give you a tip about the shoes and what I use for the shoes. So for the one, I used a ribbon that I had in my stash because I couldn't find a fabric that I liked. And I was trying to find something with a little bit of decorative look to it. This has like a velvety feel. Very nice. I painted it later to get rid of that gold look and it left behind some of the decorative looks. So that worked out well. And then this other shoe, I use this very thin fabric here. So when you're using very thin fabric like this, and glue together, you want to make sure that your glue is very thin. Paint it in a very thin layer. Otherwise, it's going to show through your fabric. And it never looks nice when it shows through the fabric. All right, I'm really happy with how that turned out. I did add a little strip here, and I just rolled up another piece, one of these. Rolled it up and glued it on. And then a little pull tab thing here. I don't know what you call that in the back of the shoe. And then around the edges, I cleaned them up by putting my tacky glue around there first and just rubbing in those edges let it dry and then I used a stiff brush and dipped it in the paint and just went around the edges like this and that cleaned it up nicely and gave me a little bit of a the bottom of the shoe uh, because these are a modern day pant and they have a little bit of a shine to them so I don't like that at all so just to tone them down I'm taking burnt umber and just went around and painted over the pants and that gives it a nice nicer color and also where the where I split the pants at the bottom, it has like white threads. So I've been painting over those as well. And I did go over his shoes as well, just to dirty them up a bit. Because they looked a little bit too new. <laughs> Didn't look like he had been running around the forest at all with those shiny green shoes. So I just toned those down. And then the gold really wants to show through here. I've done these shoes two or three times now and I can still see a little bit of that gold through there. So I'm just going to keep painting over them. <laughs> And eventually it'll tone down. So now I'm working on his vest. I'm going to piece this together and I don't have very much of this fabric and I just love this fabric so much. So I found if I, this is the right side, but if I use the back side, I think, I think that's going to work. So I've cut a piece here and I've cut it on an angle. I've already got one side done. I can piece something together for the back and I'm going to have something else down here so it's going to work out. Anyway, we're going to get this done. So I did cut it on an angle. I'm going to lay it over his shoulder, put his arm up, and right there. And it falls apart, like the, the threads come off really easy. So I'm trying to keep it intact until I can get it sewn up. 
see there's one that just came off okay so I'm going to take it off and I'm going to sew this these two sides here together okay and now I'm going to tuck this sleeve under and now I'll do stitches all the way around this to close up this part for the back I'm just going to add a strip in the center and I'm going to sew them together that actually turned out really well and I double stitched everything because like I said that fabric is a little bit on the fragile side but it feels good now I can pull on it and tug on it in this thread stay place all right guys in the next clip we are attaching his hair and I forgot to show you that I added color to his cheeks and his lips so I just put some on his nose now so I'm gonna back it up and show you how I done that so when I want to do a really faint color transfer I just use my finger and I'm gonna use a red pen you can use a felt pen too I just gotta get little color on my finger and then I got a couple drops of water in this plate here so I'm just gonna dip my finger in that water and then I just transfer the color over and I rub it in that way you're not getting too much color at a time and you have more control how much color you put down but yeah figured I better show you that now because in the next clip we're adding the hair so you want to add the color to the cheeks now and to the lips as well this I'm going to use tacky glue and attach it um, down here and then you just build it up. So I've already done all the way around here. And if you were doing dark hair, you'd probably want to paint his head, similar color to, to the hair that you're using. Uh, this hair is very light, so I don't need to do anything. And you just keep layering until you get to the top. All right, so I just had to do an edit and you would have seen it by now because I fixed his forehead. So that's why it looks a little different now if you've forgotten that part in the video. So I'll continue here. I'm gonna be adding some eyebrows up here. I gotta fill in his beard a little bit more. It's too short. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some to the back, a little lower each time so I can get it longer. My battery is dying, has to charge for a bit. So I'm just going to do this real quickly so you can see it on camera. And then I'm going to fill it in some more off camera. So if I want to make his beard longer, so I put some glue on the ends of the hair. I'll lift this up and I'll put this right here. And then after it's all dry and it's as long as I want it to, to be, then I can start filling in a little bit more here. All right, what I'm doing now is going to make a little bird's nest on top of his head with his hair. Okay, so I'm just going to dump some glue here. Okay, so I'm just going to push this in the center, and there's a lot of glue in there, remember. So I'm going to hold my finger on the outside of that hair I just added, and just push into it, kind of like making a donut. I'm actually not done his beard or his hair yet, but it's going to be enough for this video to get you through until the next one. In the next one, I'm hoping by then I'll have figured out how to curl some of the hair before I put it on there. Because if you look at his pictures online, he does have some wavy look to his beard. So I'm going to be figuring that out for the next video. Just wanted to give you a little tip. This is gray chalk and I went around and I did do some of his hair so I just rubbed it in because he does have some gray in his hair and beard and so you can do that as well. In the next clip I'm going to be making some bird poop and I use tacky glue, gray paint, some sand and little bits of moss and mixed all those together. All right guys, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I made his hat. I'll also show you how I made his cape. So I gotta get that sewn up. But once I do have it sewn up, I will do a part two video. And once that video is ready, it will be popping up on your screen. 
So today is July the 17th, 2021. So it won't be ready today, but it could be ready in the next couple of days. Yeah, until then, I hope this video gave you enough to get you through until the next one. So if you do make yourself a character like this, I'd love to see it. Post pictures on my Facebook page, Where the Gnomes Live, or tag me on Instagram, Oyella underscore crafts. And until next time...